Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. So let me start today's video by showing you this picture. When you look at this picture, it fills you with fear. You start imagining really bad things that the market is going to crash tomorrow. Musk has sold his shares, Zuckerberg is selling his shares, Jeff Bezos is selling his shares. So probably something wrong in the economy, something really, really bad is going to happen. And the markets are going to tank from 18,000 Nifty to literally 2,000 now. Are the markets going to crash? You will understand this if you watch this video. So do watch the video till the very end. But more important lesson, especially for new investors right now is that you must be really sensible in terms of where you are investing your money right now. You must have a very specific approach and a method to investing right now. Because if you purchase overinflated assets, it could be a mutual fund, it could be a bond, it could be a stock, it could be cryptos. If you are purchasing overinflated assets, the chances are that you will get stuck with a really bad asset for a very long period of time where it does not give you any returns. To prove a point, now take a look at the Reliance chart here, right? This is the Nifty chart of Reliance from 2008 approximately to 2018. Reliance did not give any returns to its shareholders. If you buy similar stocks, I'm not saying exact stocks, if you buy similar stocks or similar assets now at overinflated prices, you might get stuck with these for a decade. So on this video, very important for you to understand what framework am I using? I'm going to tell you a specific framework that you can use. It's a four quadrant approach to investing. Very relevant video for you to now pick assets that can help you make decent returns in the market without taking insane amount of risk. Let's understand this, but let me help you set the context first. First and foremost, there are three specific changes that is happening in our economy right now, which is changing the entire landscape of investing. What are these three changes? Number one, of course, is the high inflation, low interest rate combination. I have talked about it extensively on my other videos, so do watch it. What this simply means is that the inflation rates are going to be up for a substantial period of time. Now, you could have easily noticed this by looking at the recent trends with Asian Paints, Hindustan Unilever, bunch of different companies. These companies have taken a little bit of hit right now. Why? Because the input cost for all these companies, for example, when Asian Paints is trying to manufacture paints, it has to procure a lot of material to manufacture that paint. Now, if the procurement cost has gone up, it has gone up massively, then of course the profit margins for Asian Paints will come down unless, unless it increases the prices of its product. And that is precisely what Hindustan Unilever has also done. That is precisely what Asian Paints has also announced that they are going to increase their prices of the products. So this is the first key change that is happening in the economy that companies which do not have a pricing power now, at least for the next five years, they are going to suffer very badly. Second key change, what is happening in the market is that the crypto angle is developing. Now, please don't drop off and dislike this video. Please hear me out for a second here. I'm not saying that go and invest in cryptos, but all of us do need to agree with the fact that crypto market has grown. This is a fact. This is not up for debate from that angle. Crypto market has gone up it has gained prominence. What has it become? It has become an asset class of its own. There is a new asset class in town and we need to be cognizant of that. So this is the second key change that money previously used to flow between commodities, stock market and bond market. Now there is crypto market also. So there is a fourth player in town from that perspective. So keep an eye out on this fourth investment option. Third, China angle is really ramping up. Lot of commotion between China and the US. Supply chains have been disrupted and new players are staking the claim that, you know what, that China supply chain has fallen. So now we are going to come up with better supply chains and countries like India are going to benefit immensely from that. So these are the three key changes that are happening at the macro level. There are multiple more changes, which I'll talk about subsequently on my some other videos. Do let me know in the comment if you would want me to make a separate video on that. But these are three very important changes that are happening in the economy right now. Since so many changes are happening at a macro level, many of you, especially if you're a beginner or an intermediate level player in the stock market, you will get really scared that, you know what, where should I invest? Should I go invest in cryptos? Should I go invest in mutual funds? Should I go invest in bunch of different instruments? What should I do? I am not able to follow it, right? So I will break it down for you. What framework you can use for investing? Also a very quick shout out to our sponsors for this video, Navi Mutual Funds. In case you are a beginner and you are starting your investment journey, mutual fund industry is a very well regulated space in India. It still gives you decent returns and some amount of your investment should go to mutual funds from that angle. 
look for mutual fund houses where the expense ratio is very less so check the link in the description box you will get a lot of understanding about that what type of mutual funds they run they run a nifty fund where the expense ratio is the least in india which is very good and you can try it out all right so now let me help you systematically think about if you are looking to invest your money right now across different asset classes be it mutual funds be it bonds be it stocks be it cryptocurrencies how you should think about it so i name this framework as a four quadrant framework right four quad framework right now essentially what you do is this right so you create an x axis and you create a y axis right on x axis you can plot returns right returns right and on y axis you can plot risk right and you can divide this entire bucket into four quadrants right so essentially now if you start placing different assets onto these four quadrants what can you say for example if we try to put something like a nifty 50 mutual fund right versus if we put something like let's say bitcoin right if we put something like a small cap volatile stock right volatile stock if we pick a large cap stock like let's say hul right so let's try to place these four assets for me to illustrate the specifics of this particular framework so let's pick with nifty 50 mutual fund so if you talk about the risk reward equation for nifty 50 what is going to happen so let's say that if you're investing your money in nifty 50 mutual fund right and if you invest 100 rupees in it now even if the market crash do you think that you're going to lose all your money in nifty 50 no right even in a very deep market crash this will go down by 50 percent approximately right so you are going to lose at max 50 rupees on this right but if you keep on waiting and if the market does not crash and if the index keep on growing and the pace at it is growing what would this 100 rupee become in the next five years it will at least grow by 15 percent kagar so in the next five years probably you will make a gain of 60 rupees on it so is the risk reward equation sensible the answer is yes and this should become a part of your portfolio and this is something that you should invest in if you have a five year investing horizon period on this right is this a high risk high return type of game no because the returns are going to be modest right 12 to 15 percent that's nifty returns nifty is a collection of all the stocks and is the risk very high no so the returns are moderate and the risk is not very high so probably this nifty 50 will come somewhere here right so let me draw it out by a different color so i will draw it with a blue dot right so this is what nifty 50 you can visually represent and for investing in nifty 50 you can check out navi mutual fund also you can check out the link in the description box it's a great firm very less expense ratio now let's talk about the second asset so let's talk about something like bitcoin right so if you try to plot bitcoin on this quadrant where will it fall it will be a high risk high reward type of a game for example if you invest 100 rupees in bitcoin right now what is the absolute worst case scenario that can happen on Bitcoin? What is the risk? So you risk losing all 100 rupees, right? Probably, you know, blanket van, what not, something really bad happens with Bitcoin. You're at most going to lose 100 rupees. And what is the maximum reward, right? If the crypto market stays for the next five, six, seven years, it is literally growing at 100% rate, literally 100% rate. So even conservatively in five years, let's keep the math simple, you're going to make 500 rupees. So the risk is 100 rupees, right? This is maximum you can lose and maximum you can gain is in total. It will become like whatever, like 500, 600 rupees. So huge gain opportunity, right? The point I'm trying to drive home through these two examples is very simple that there is risk, there is reward, right? Don't just simply say that, okay, an asset is very volatile. Therefore, I'll not invest in it. That asset is volatile. You just need to invest 100 rupees in it. Probably it will go to 600 rupees. So what is wrong with that? It's called as risk adjusted return. In finance, this is called a sharp ratio, the risk adjusted return. So you must do your risk return adjustment analysis. What you should not do with an asset like cryptocurrency or Bitcoin is that you have put in all your money in Bitcoin. Okay, That might not be a very sensible way of investing or a holistic or a diversified way of investing. But probably from an investment point of view, Bitcoin might be a great option. Now let's talk about the third option. For example, small cap volatile asset. For example, it could be I made a video on NGL fine chemicals. Now it would have higher volatility, which means that the risk is high, but the returns are also higher, right? So anything that gives you high risk, high return does not mean that it's a bad asset. What type of asset you should avoid? You should avoid assets which are here. For example, where the risk is very high, but the returns are not high at all, right? 
An example would be LNT. Now here, take a look at the last five years returns for LNT, right? This is one. Second picture, take a look at Nifty last five years return. What do you see? The returns for LNT is lower than Nifty 50 returns in India, right? So the returns are low. What about risk? Is LNT more risky compared to Nifty 50? The answer is yes. How do you identify that? You can take a long term beta of LNT and you will see it is significantly more volatile. The beta is in 1.2 range, right? So which is very, very high. So for taking higher risk, you are not making any returns. So for taking too much risk, you are not being adequately compensated in terms of the return. So you must exactly avoid these type of assets. Now what about large caps, something like HUL, Asian Paints, are these good companies to invest right now? The answer is yes, right? Why? Because they have very strong branding power. They can increase their prices whenever they like. They are somewhat like a lower variant of Apple products, right? So Apple products have such massive brand value that they have massive pricing power. So even if the inflation is very high, even when Apple, when it orders its computer part to assemble the computer or whatever, the supply, the input cost for Apple might go up, but the branding power is so high that if Apple procures material at 10% higher amount, then it can increase the product prices by 30%. So they can still make more money in this type of a market. So it is very important for you to understand that just by looking at certain categories that you know what, okay, Bitcoin is really bad. No, you need to do risk return analysis. If the risk return makes sense, if that sharp ratio is sensible, then you should go and invest in that asset, no problem. Similarly, just simply saying that you know what, I'll buy a large cap stock and I'm done. No, look at large cap stocks which have a branding power which can increase the prices. Some large cap stocks, for example, Reliance. They do not have pricing power as of now because majority of their business still comes from oil and gas. Now in oil, you don't have pricing power per se. So it's a large cap stock, but it is not allowing you to make money in this economy. So please be thoughtful about the fact that don't just simply go buy okay, large cap funds, this return or small cap funds, this return or crypto, very high risk. You're just looking at one part of the equation. You need to do both risk and return analysis and only then put your money behind any asset. Now many of you might ask me that, okay, Akshat, you have told us how to invest in assets by using this four quadrant framework, great. But should I not pull all my money because big investors are also pulling their money, then I will re-enter when they start pushing in their money. Great theory, but it doesn't work that way. And there are multiple points to it. Number one, that no one can time the market. I still have friends who are looking to invest in Nifty when it falls to 7,500 levels. And guess what? Probably it will never go down to that level ever again, right? So they were keep on sitting with that cash. Essentially, there is a very interesting quote that more people have lost money waiting for a crash than in the crash itself. Very interesting quote and a very relevant quote that please don't try to time the market. You will fail at it badly. Even big investors, whether you take a look at Mr. Rakesh Sunjanwala, Radha Krishna Dhamani and bunch of different, different investors, nine out of 10 investors, they are almost fully invested in the market all the time. Markets will always give you good opportunities to buy, good opportunities to sell. I talked about one way of investing in the market right now. Now, depending on the market conditions, this quadrant system might change. Then I'll make another video on that. But this is the method that you should be following. This is precisely the method that I am also following. And please don't try to time the market. Now, many of you would say that, okay, Akshat, that Warren Buffett sits on a ton of cash all the time, right? So why does he do it? He knows more than you. Of course, he knows a lot more than me. I'm not trying to contradict his point, but he has a highly concentrated portfolio. Almost 40% of his portfolio is made up of Apple stock. In my case, I have a highly diversified portfolio like Ray Dalio. So from that angle, different investors can act in different, different ways. As normal retail investors, we should stay diversified because we will never get news on time. So please don't try to act like Mr. Warren Buffett. If you don't have similar access to information like Mr. Warren Buffett, stay diversified, invest in sensible assets. That is the main message. So this brings me to the final section of this video where I will talk about few of the key assets where you must invest, right? So first and foremost, an asset in which all of us should invest is developing our skills because if you develop your skills, then you are increasing your earning power. The more you earn, the more you can invest and the more returns you can make. There is honestly no point in just investing 1000 rupees in the stock market and making it to 2000 even with 100% gains. You haven't made much in absolute amounts. But if you have a 1 crore portfolio and you make 10% on it, huge gain, right? So 
first and foremost if you develop your skills that can prove to be the greatest asset or the greatest investment for you it does not depend on market it does not depend on anything it literally depends on your will to learn and will to explore new things read books listen to podcasts take courses do a bunch of different things to improve yourself and this is the first key asset in which everyone should invest second for beginners in this market please don't go and become adventurous because as i said earlier that you might get stuck with a really bad asset for a very long period of time if you purchase it at a very high price so completely okay to do nifty based investing completely okay to give your money to mutual fund managers and let them invest it's fine not the end of the game you keep on learning you directly start investing in stocks once you understand a little bit more third and finally for intermediate and advanced level players who listen to my videos all the time who want to trade stocks on their own please ensure that you are using this quadrant system that i just explained on this video and investing in proper good assets don't end up investing in bad assets because it will become very difficult for you to exit those bad assets in a sideways moving market that is where we are going so essentially markets can move in three ways upwards where the market continues to go up as it has been going for the last one year in such a market it's very easy to exit your bad stocks second market is going downwards here if you are holding bad assets they will go down like anything and of course bad situation and the third and the most prominent market type is sideways so the market stay sideways for 60 70% of the time in my understanding we are moving towards a sideways markets and now your skill will be tested more in terms of making money consistently in the stock market so i hope you enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up and i will see you the next time mutual fund investments are subject to market risks read all scheme related documents carefully